Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demo, I'll create a flow that sends an email report to a manager each month. I will let the flow take information from this SharePoint projects list and report the total number of projects with approved budgets and also the sum of these approved budgets. I have renamed the title column to project name and I've also added 10 projects that I'll use for testing the flow. Now, I'll add a currency column and name it Approved Budget. The internal name of this column will be used in a filter query, so I will first write the name in camel case style. That will give a good internal name. When I go back into the column and add a space between Approved and Budget, I'll get a more appealing name for the user interface, and it will not change the internal name. This column should also have values, and I will quickly add $1,000 for each project except one so that I can easily see if the flow makes the correct calculation. Now we have 10 projects and the sum of the approved budget should be $9,000. I'll create the flow from blank, so I have to do it from the Power Automate site. I'll start with a blank scheduled flow and set the frequency to one month. I want the flow to run on the first day of each month at seven o'clock in the morning. Here, in the trigger, I'll add my time zone. In this flow, I'll use variables to calculate the number of projects and the sum of approved budgets, and I'll start with initializing them. The first variable will be total number of projects. In Power Automate, you can actually use spaces in variable names, but in most programming languages, it's not possible so I don't want to start a bad habit. The type can be integer because this value cannot have decimals. The value will be calculated by an increment variable action, so I'll leave it blank. The second variable will be total approved budget. Here the value is stored in a column that can have decimals, so the type must be float. I'll leave the value field blank because it will also be calculated by an increment variable action. Now, I'll add a SharePoint get items action, because I want the flow to run through all items in the projects list. The sum of the approved budgets will be calculated by an increment variable action, so I must exclude items where the budget is not filled out, otherwise the empty value will create an error. You can of course set the approved budget column to be mandatory, but here I'll show you another method. I'll add a filter query property that limits the get items action to only fetch items where the approved budget column is not equal to null. That means that it has not been filled out. I will set a limit for the items to be retrieved to make sure I get all the items. That can be done in two different ways. I'll enter 5000 here at top count and here in action settings I'll also enter 5,000. Now I've specified the get items action so that I can add an apply to each action to loop through all the items. The output should be the dynamic content value. The next step is to add the action increment variable and that should of course be inside the apply to each block. This action will add to the variable total number of projects. If I set the value to 1, the result will give me the total number of projects. Now I'll do the same for the sum of the approved budgets. Here I'm again using the increment action to perform an addition using the dynamic content approved budget so that everything is summarized. That was the calculation. Now the flow should add the results into an email, so I'll add an action for that. I'll put myself as the receiver here to be able to test the flow easily. I'll change the email address when everything works as it should. The subject can be hard-coded. In the body, I'll hard code number of projects and total approved budget, 
and then I'll add the dynamic content from the variables. As you saw in the beginning of the demo, I already have a number of test items in the projects list. Now I just have to save and run the flow to see if the calculation is done and the email is sent. The flow is running, and if I go to my mailbox, I should have the report. Yes, here it is. And the result is correct. Of course you can format the email more nicely, and I've shown how to do that in another demo, but here my goal was to show how variables could be used for calculation in a common business scenario. Thank you for watching.